In this video, we're going to look at many-to-many -many relationships in Power BI. We're going to look at what it is, what problems it cause, and two different ways to resolve it. All of that and more. So without further ado, let's get started. Hi, my name is Fernand, and welcome to the Solutions Abroad YouTube channel, where we cover tips, tricks, and best practices when working with Power BI. I upload new videos every week, so make sure you hit that subscribe button and the bell icon to get notified when a new one is out. So the many-to-many -many relationships is one of the cardinality types that you can use when you're making relationships between two tables in your Power BI reports. And relationships is something that you typically create so that Power BI understands how those two tables are related and can work with each other. In most scenarios, you would use or create relationships with a one-to-many cardinality. This means that one of your tables will have a unique list of values in its column, whereas the other one will have duplicates. However, if you create a relationship between two tables that have duplicate values, you will be given an option and a warning to use many to many cardinality. So here's a report that I've created for our demo today. Uh, it's basically a list of uh, different books along with their sales and their budgets. To make it easy, I've added them already in this visual here just to visualize what they have in them. So as you can see, we have a list of books here on the sales table, which is a list of these different books for uh, different points in time and the sales for each of these books. We also have a budget table here, which uh, does the same thing, except it's for budget. One thing to notice between these two tables is that um, we uh, have books on both tables. And let's say we want to create one combined table where it lists out all the books, uh, all the sales, and all of its budgets, um, which means that if we want to visualize that, we need to create a relationship between these two tables. Now, to create a relationship between tables is actually pretty simple. So you go to the uh, model view here. You simply look for the tables that you need to create a relationship between and simply drag those two columns together. So as you can see, we have dragged book uh, the, the book column across these two tables. And as you can see here, what it's done is it's uh, defaulted to be using many to many along with this uh, warning here saying that um, it has or it will need to have a cardinality of many to many. If you try to change it to one to many, it, will, it won't let you just because um, uh, one of these tables needs to have a unique uh, value. So if you're a subscriber to the channel, you will know that my recommendation is always to avoid many to many relationships. And we're going to look at how to fix this and change this into one to many in a second. But for now, let's entertain the idea of many to many relationships. And that's because although many to many is not recommended, it is something that you can choose to use as long as you understand some of its ambiguity or some of its um, functions that differ from a typical one to many relationship. So um, even though there is a warning, nothing stops us from making that relationship. So if we hit save, here, for example, yes, there is a warning, but it does create that relationship and you can start visualizing it. So let's start by creating this combined table that we were talking about. So uh, let's start by adding the book. Uh, we'll choose the book column from one of these tables. Either will work. Um, we'll choose the sales and the budget for now. So if we look at this table and compare it between these two tables, what you'll notice is that uh, while the total add up, so 67.5 million, 13.2 million budget, it's the same as these two tables, the list of books itself don't really match up. So you will notice that some of these books uh, or, or some of the books don't exist here. So uh, Good Omens, for example, here have sales worth 25 million, but it's not showing up in our combined table here. And that's because we're using the book column from the budget table, which doesn't have Good Omens as a book. So, okay, so you might think, okay, well, let's uh, let's fix that. So let's add the book from the sales table. Now, if we add that, 
uh, that does fix the issue so you can see good omens but now you have the opposite issue you have the june book on the budget table what is not on the sales table and um, this is uh, an issue because now it means that you can't use either because they both have incomplete values between their uh, two records. Apart from this, there are also a bunch of ambiguities and limitations with many-to-many -many relationships that is not obvious if you're not aware of these. One of the more obvious examples that you might encounter is when you're using the related function, which is like a lookup function in Excel. So this will let you get a column from one table to another. This function won't work if you're trying to get data uh, between two tables that have a many-to-many relationship. There's also an issue when you're using the all function uh, with many to many relationships where uh, it doesn't remove the filters uh, between tables in a many to many relationship, which is not what would be the expected function of this. So my personal recommendation is, and even when I'm working with relationships in general, is to try to avoid many to many relationships to basically just get rid of all of this ambiguity that you might encounter, uh, especially because the fix to many to many relationships is actually pretty simple. The first way that I'm going to show you is the simplest way to resolve it without actually using any relationships at all, which is to basically denormalize your data. So what this means is basically combining these two tables into one so that you can visualize them in one single table. Now, this is not really a solution that I would typically recommend, but it is the simplest option if you simply want to uh, do a quick fix in a simple scenario like this. Here we are in the Power Query editor of Power BI desktop. So from here, we'll simply go to append queries, append queries as new. It will let us uh, put these two tables on top of each other. So you will have all your books, your budgets and sales, and we're going to Call this one combined, hit close and apply. So now let's put this into a single table. So as you remember, uh, our original objective is to basically bring in all of the books, bring in all of its sales and bring in all of its budgets, which if we expand it here, you can see now that all of the books on both tables exist in this one single one, along with its sales and budget, which is exactly what we wanted. However, my recommended way of fixing this is actually creating a dimension table or a bridging table. It's basically a table that will have the unique values for both of these uh, tables so that you can create a one-to-many relationship across the two of them. This is the most sustainable way to resolve many-to-many -many relationships, especially if you're planning to build on top of this semantic model. Uh, so what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna delete this table. We're gonna go back to Power Query and we're gonna reformat this query that we've just created. We're just gonna call this one Books and uh, we have appended it. But what we'll do here is instead of leaving it like this, we'll simply do a group by and we will delete, um, we'll, we'll leave it to basic so that uh, we will just have a list of all of the books. We'll remove this count. And what you'll notice is now we have a unique list of all of our books in this books query. So if we hit close and apply, We'll go back to the uh, model view here. We'll remove this many-to-many -many relationship between these two tables. And what we'll do is we will create now a one-to-many relationship between the two of them through the books query. So as you can see now, it's one-to-many. It's because books is always a unique list. We hit save. Do the same thing for the budget. Hit save. And now let's go back to our visual here. We'll bring in now the book here like this. And like before, sales and budget. And as you can see, it gives us the total values 
for all of the books between these two tables using the one-to-many relationship using this dimension table. So when I create dimension tables like this, for example, for reporting purposes, I would typically hide the other books uh, or, or the ones that I use in the many relationship just so that it's not used and you can you, you should only be able to use books. So I would um, go right click and hide. Um, so they are not deleted, they are still there. You will find them in the model view here. They will just be hidden. But um, if you're visualizing, you should always only be able to use the book uh, column from the books table. And that's really it for this video. I hope you now know a little bit more about many-to-many -many relationship cardinality. If that's not enough detail or you'd like to learn more about many-to-many -many relationships, there is actually an article by Microsoft uh, explaining many-to-many -many relationships and some of these limitations in greater detail. So if you want to learn more about it, I'll leave a link to it in the description box below. Thanks for watching. As usual, give this video a like if you found it useful. Give it a dislike if you didn't so I know to do better for next time. Ask your questions in the comment section box below so I can help you and you can help others. If you like this video, we have a Patreon page where you can support the channel and get exclusive perks like early access, demo files, and credits at the end of these videos. Thanks again for watching and see you in the next one.